All right. Great day. Great day, good people. <laughs> I am so, so very, very excited to have a special uh, distinguished guest uh, with us. And uh, it's just amazing to, to be able to uh, have uh, such a wealth of knowledge of such a special person uh, in my life and, uh, and a mentor as well. So, but today we have none other than uh, the Miss Dr. Jacqueline King, uh, CEO and founder of the Black Women Empowerment Network uh, today. So how are you doing? I am doing wonderful, Mr. Derek. How are you doing? I am so awesome. I cannot stand it. <laughs> that's a good thing. But yes, that's a great thing. That's a great thing. So, uh, number one, thank you for agreeing to uh, come on, and uh, just just thankful for you and the uh, accomplishments that uh, that you've made. So, I'll do a proper introduction. I am Derek Young from Birmingham, Alabama, serial entrepreneur and a real estate investor and the host of Building Wealth Through Real Estate. And so today we, uh, we wanted to invite our special distinguished guest whose platform this is uh, on. So to have a, a conversation on what does Building Wealth Through Real Estate mean uh, to her and talk about some of her many, many accomplishments that she has uh, accomplished from the ups, downs, and the highs and lows, and how has she made it to this point uh, from start uh, to finish. So uh, with that, uh, you want to introduce yourself, Dr. King? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize I was introducing myself, but uh, yeah, I am Dr. Jacqueline King, CEO and founder of Black Women Empowered and Black Men Empowered. Uh, social media ministry network, um, and we have been empowering people all over the world for 10 years um, through uh, ministry, encouragement, broadcast, and so much more. So I typically don't um, do interview, allow people to interview me because I'm usually the one that's doing interviews, but somehow or another, Derek talked me into this. So uh here I am. So basically my background, I spent um, almost 27 years at the largest electric and gas utility in New Jersey uh, on various management positions, uh, served on many boards. Um, if you go to blackwomenempowered.org, which is going across the stream, you can see my full bio. But um, I've been a servant uh, most of my life, serving on in many capacities. In Greensboro, I served on the Human Relations Commission, where I was a commissioner and vice chair of human relations and so many other things I can't even remember. But to me, service is really, really key to living a fulfilled life, not only living a fulfilled life, but to being blessed. Um, God blesses us to be a blessing as far as I'm concerned. So I have spent many years uh, in serving. Um, and then I started Black Women Empowered in 2012 basically to encourage um, women, which started out to be, now we're encouraging people all over the world, but we wanted to encourage women to, to um, be balanced professionally, personally, and, um, and, and just, just, you know, love themselves, love each other, support and love uh, one another. So that's pretty much what we do. Uh, we have a lot going on. We have some big, big news that's coming up, some networks that are coming up that you're going to want to uh, connect with. So make sure that you follow blackwomenempowered.org uh, and you can get on our mailing list so you can see all of um, the events we have coming up. And even if you want to just uh, be a vendor on, at some of our events, virtual or in person. And that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, you know, I got a couple of questions uh, for you. So I want to talk about building and building through. So, you know, um, your story is, is that you started with 200 women. And I want to know, what did that look like from the start? Like, was there a point where you felt like giving up or were you even being effective uh, to what you started? Yeah, that's an interesting question. So, um, we started on Facebook with just about 200 women. It was on a Saturday and it was after um, the first Black Girls Rock. And uh, so, yeah, I 
was, you know, certain at the time that this is what God was telling me to do. However, you know, um, there's always a test, a trial um, before you actually see the results. So when I started it, I it was just me and I would go in uh, the group every day and encourage, you know, the women, you know, you are great. You're wonderful. Put some posts up. And, and for I can't even tell you how long nobody responded <laughs> And I'm thinking like, uh, God, I'm not so sure this is, uh, maybe I didn't hear from you. Maybe this is not right. But I didn't quit. And that's the key. The key is if you believe in your heart, God has told you, uh, given you a direction, you have to stick with it even when you don't see the results. And most times you don't see the results immediately anyway. And so at at some point in time, it just it just blew up. Um, so we went from 200 to 2000 to, to 200,000 to, um, now we have, um, uh, millions on Facebook and thousands on other social media platforms. So I didn't miss the mark, but like I said, in the beginning, you, you, you just have to hang in there and continue to do what it is you were called to do. That's that's an amazing uh, story. Being uh, consistent is the key. So that's why I always tell anybody that, you know, number one, you got to get started in order to be successful. Number two, you got to stay the course. And so that's what I've seen uh, in your journey is that you got started and then it, it, it was some difficulties, but you stick, you, you stuck and you stayed and look at you now. You have your own platform. So uh, thank you for that. And so guess what? If you would have, if you would have quit, I wouldn't have been here today either. <laughs> so uh, other other people are are looking at you as an example, and especially the people that have been with you since day one to see where your growth was. But so let's talk about building through. So uh, I created this show to be able to show people that you know you can get started you, you're not too old you're not too young to get started at something but it's consistency so we named the show building wealth through real estate so the reason why we did this is because as you're building you will have to go through some things in order to get to where you want to be and so if if it were easy everybody would be doing this and that's not the case so you separated yourself from others so how were you able to do that in essence and with now like technology there's so many distractions out here but how were you able to stay so focused on that particular goal knowing that you still had family business and everything right so the main thing you have to realize that um anytime God, first of all, anytime God gives you a vision, God doesn't give you a vision without provision. He's always going to provide the means for you to fulfill that which he has placed in you. Um, there's always going to be the non-believers, the negative uh, thinkers, the people who want to tear you down as opposed to building you up. Um, but you have to look past that because the vision is really not about you. It is about fulfilling God's purpose and showing people that, uh, you know, you can do this and, and all things. One of my scripture favorite scriptures is I can do all things in Christ who gives me strength. And so if you don't believe that, then you're going to, you're, you're already behind the eight ball. You, you're not going to be able to make it, but you have to believe in the vision and keep moving. Um, you just, you know, you can't give up. You, you surround yourself with people who are positive and doing things. And if you don't have people who believe in your vision, you need to get rid of them because they don't need to be there. That they, they're, not, they're not supposed to be on that journey with you. And it's okay. It's okay to get rid of people. It's okay to say, you know, your time is up. You served your, your season is over. It's okay uh, to move on to the next. So uh, I, that's what I say. You, you just, you know, you just have to keep going and, and change is inevitable. You're going to, you can continue to evolve. Um, I remember we started off, uh, we didn't, there was no Facebook live. So we started off on, uh, 
we did a call in like a free conference call. So we were doing our prayer line on free con. You know, you remember free conference call, and we did blog talk radio, and we did um, Periscope. Uh, I mean, we we've done it everything. So we just keep evolving to the next thing. But that's what it is. You have to keep going. You can't stay stagnant. You have to keep up with technology. I'm a techie. Uh, even at my advanced age, I'm still a, a techie. And yeah, right. Because I have a birthday coming up. But um, you just have to keep. You have to keep learning and keep growing. Because if you are doing what you did uh, five years ago, you're doomed for failure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you end up like Kmart and uh, uh, Toys R Us. Sears, is, is Sears still in business? Sears, they're gone. They're gone. They didn't adjust to the time, and so the time was saying that, hey, y'all need to make sure that y'all adjusting to the market, which is becoming digital. And so that's one of the things that when I'm doing my assessments of business is that, hey, if you have a business and you're not online, you are already 10, 10 years behind. You better say it. Mm hmm. Because if you think about it, like I had a conversation with a guy uh, and uh, he recently retired from uh, the CIA. So he said, well, Derek, you know, and he gave me some great advice. He was saying the conversation that we're having now is five years ahead of the game. But he said, I personally am 20 years ahead. And I was like, wow, now that's deep. If you can have somebody saying that how 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 far advanced they are, so this guy he was like technical CIA like black ops stuff, and so he was explaining some of the stuff to me, and I'm like, oh my goodness! And then he compared himself to Lim Neeson about how he protected certain secrets, and so he was saying that we have to start now being the first, Don't stop being scared, just because it might be something that might be out of the box, but do the research and just go from there. So um, another question that I would like to ask you is that, so with, and I, I, I refer to you as the queen of tech. And so, uh, but another, another question that I wanna ask is, how were you able to niche it down to this point where you say, hey, I'm going to start on Facebook and I'm going to evolve from this? Like what led you to that point to where you are right now? Well, like I said, I'm, I've always been a computer geek, uh, so to speak. Um, I started uh, designing websites. God, I kind of got forced into it. The company that I was working for, I got a job, a promotion, a major promotion. And they told me, uh, you will be in charge of the website. Well, none of that was websites. And, and they, didn't have, they didn't have the drop and drag back then. You had to do HTML. And you know what I'm saying, uh, coding and all, and I didn't know anything about that. I had to actually take courses because I'm not, do I know how to do this? No. So um, I started off building websites, very small, nothing major. Um, the company website, they actually built it, but I had to maintain it. So I still had to know the coding. So, I mean, really, it's about learning. Education is the key no matter what. Uh, you have to keep learning. When you stop learning, um, it's over. So uh, when I started Facebook, uh, you know, our Facebook page, actually what happened was my daughter actually started our Facebook page and I believe she got it up to like 700. That page now has 2 million followers, um, that page alone, but we have several. And so I just kept, kept um, going and seeing what, people wanted to, you know, wanted to be encouraged. So that's what I did, kept going. And then I, then I put the Pinterest page and then I put the Instagram page and then I put the LinkedIn page. My son started, <laughs> both of my kids are techies in case you didn't figure that out. My son started my LinkedIn page and got it up to 35 followers. I think we're over 200,000 followers now. So um, you just have to keep building on, on each one and, and, and don't be afraid. Like you said, don't be afraid of technology. Uh, fear is the biggest enemy to success. I'll say that again. Fear is the biggest enemy to success. And I'll, I'll tie in what you're doing to it. Um, 
I was 29 years old when I bought my first house and recently divorced with two kids. My mother was petrified. You don't need a house. You just you just need an apartment. That I, I don't want an apartment because I'm not going to spend all my money making somebody else rich. That that was my whole thing at 29 years old. And I bought that house and stayed in it to, for 17 years. I bought it at 56,000, sold it for 126,000. So uh, if I had let fear or my mother's fear at that time hold me back, I wouldn't have done so well. I was able to sell that house and, and move to a place where houses were cheaper and buy two houses. So, you know, it really is about moving forward, regardless to, you know, everybody's going to have a certain bit of anxiety. Anytime you do something new, a new job, uh, uh, anything new is kind of like the fear of the unknown. But if you can get past that, you can be successful. You are so right. You're so right when you say that. So it kind of reminds me of, uh, I had a client of mine um and they there, there's so many ways that you can layer this so there's a question that we spoke about last week and there was the question was would you be ready when the opportunity comes and so that that goes for both ways business and personal so what happened in this particular client um the owners of the particular house were about to put them out. So it was a seller finance deal where the seller was the bank and the, the renters were paying the seller, right? So the sellers knew that the property had a lot of value in it. So they wanted to move them out so they then could put it back on the market, right? So the question was, what would you do when opportunity uh, arises, right? So this was an opportunity for them to either fail or uh, follow through with the instructions, right? And so this is building through. So they had to go through in order to get to where they were, right? So what ended up happening is they called me and the wife. So she's she's a, a Pakistani. And so she already has this, uh, this uh, thick accent. So just imagine her talking really fast, right? And I'm like, whoa, what is happening? So I said, well, slow down. I said, is anybody bleeding? Are the, are the kids missing? She said, no. I said, well, you're bringing the wrong energy to this opportunity. So I said, well, let's let's work it out. Let's figure it out. So the thing was, all we had to do is just get our, get my legal team on to get them patched in. So they had to go through that. But if I hadn't have been in the right uh, situation to bring the right type of energy to the opportunity, then they could possibly uh, be out. So this is what this reminds me of is when you said you were 29 and single, two kids. And so this is why I will forever have a, an affinity to women. I love working with uh, women and the majority of uh, women run my organization uh, because women get things done. Sorry, fellas, but women get things done. It's just it's just that simple. So I celebrate them. I, I even find ways how to work with them and show them uh, how to negotiate with contractors. So that, that'll be another uh, strategy session that, uh, that we talk about. But so for you, I think that you're, you're like the unicorn. You don't meet many people like you to be so advanced um, when you could have given up at any point like, how do you stay consistent? How do you continue to evolve? <laughs> well, like I said, it's it's not about me. Um, I know that people depend on the encouragement. Um, they depend on the prayer that we provide on Facebook um, five days a week or seven days a week, whatever it is now. They... Uh, we get letters and emails and, and not just that. Now, remember, we have a nonprofit, too. So our nonprofit uh, helps um, homeless and struggling women. Now, we don't do individuals per se, but we work with organizations that are um, that have houses for domestic women of domestic violence, um, 
the rescue mission and the food pantries. We work with them and we help fund uh, the projects that they're doing. Because one thing that I learned is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I mean, th it's okay to have more than one, but if you have uh, two or three that are already successful, you can help them. It doesn't take anything away from you, what you're doing because it's the cause is still the same. You're helping homeless and struggling women. You're helping women of domestic violence. Um, you're helping um, people who live in food deserts who can't, can't get a meal. So uh, partnerships are really, really crucial um, in business. And a lot of people think that um, they have to go it alone. No man is an island. You are better together. I love partnerships and with the right people. Now, I've been in some bad partnerships. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I know we all have. We, I mean, it's a trial and error. You don't know what it's going to be like. But it's okay. It's okay to get out of it and then find another one. You don't give up because that one didn't work. That one wasn't the one for you at the time. But you keep going. So um, for me, when the pandemic hit, we were ahead of the game because we already had a network. People were scrambling trying to do online with no network. And especially the churches, that people went online. They weren't used to going to church online. So, you know, they were afraid of it. Oh, no, there's, there's all kind of criminals online and that, 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 that. You did not prepare. Online has been here forever. And if you're not teaching your parishioners, your students, whatever, that online is not going away, it's only going to expand, then you're missing the boat and so are they. Exactly. Like this, uh, this situation, it reminds me of, uh, uh, who made this? Song? I feel like going on. Yeah, um, uh, quite, a few, quite a few people that did it, but the one I love uh, is um, B.B. Winans. But there's quite a few. Mm -hmm. That's what it reminds me of, is encouraging you to, to keep on going no matter what. So now you were 10 years ahead of the game in consideration of what you happened. So you really didn't have to adjust. You were like, hey, uh, anybody need some tips and techniques, you know? So it's like, that's why you do want to, to be ahead of the game in regards to what you're doing. So in essence, I think you've, you've done such an exceptional job. What advice would you give to um, a younger girl who might be looking, uh, looking up to you for uh, as a mentor, what advice would you give to them? Yeah, so especially, well, it's fine a, a good mentor, but I, I would say if you're, especially in the corporate, I spent almost 27 years in corporate America. Corporate America is a tough place to be, especially for a black and brown woman. Uh, when I started, um, with the electric company that I was with, I was 20, let me see, how old was I? God, I don't even remember. Uh, let's see, I was 21. And nobody in my family ever worked in corporate America. So I didn't have anybody to use as a mentor or a guy. My my mother was a factory worker. My, my dad had a car dealership. I could get no tips from them because they didn't know so if you're doing corporate America, I would tell you to find the people who are successful and my, uh, model yourself after them. Find a good, strong mentor. And that's not easy. That's not even easy to do because so, some people think that if they help you, it's going to take away from them. And that's like the biggest barrier to me in corporate America. But I was fortunate enough to find uh, oh, actually, I would say he found me, who who now is, believe it or not, he's the CEO of the electric company, but he found me and he meant he saw greatness in me and he mentored me and I took all of his information and I put it into action and I was able to leave there with a very lucrative salary, a company car and all of that. But you've got to find, if you don't, your smarts are not going to get you where you want to be. You can be as smart as you want, but if nobody can see you, it doesn't matter. You know, you're, you're just sitting there a smart person 
and and the the higher ups are not seeing you, you have to stand out. You know the old saying: we have to be three, four, five times better than our counterparts. We know this. This is no secret. Uh, so get on those projects. Volunteer to do projects. Help people out. You you really you have to go above and beyond. Uh, otherwise, you, you're going to be in that same spot when you retire, where you started. Exactly. Well, I I have a question for you. What was it like interviewing uh, Dr. Matthew Knowles? <laughs> That's my buddy. <laughs> Dr. Knowles is amazing. He really is. Um, and it's funny because um, we were talking recently and um, he just realized that we graduate, we got our doctors from the same college. We are alumni. And he didn't, he didn't realize that. Uh, but he has such a heart for people. A lot of people don't know it. Um, but he does. I, I read something and I just really, you know, love watching his post. I don't know if you all do it. And I will give him a plug. Go to uh, MatthewKnowles.com. But um, I read a post about him. Actually, two of them. He did one on Beyonce the other day because um, she has a new album coming out. And he was saying how proud he was. And he was saying, you know, you all know her as as Queen, Queen uh, Beyonce or... Um, you know, uh, or uh, Bay. I forget what the other the title is. I, I don't remember what it is. Queen Bay or uh, something else. But anyway, he said, but I know her as my little girl, my daughter, and she's amazing. And he really does encourage his daughters. Yesterday, I believe it was yesterday um, was Solange's birthday and he gave her a big shout out. But he's very family oriented. He cares about people. He's a business Oh my God, he's a business giant. I mean, like he's like a silent giant because if you look at all the stuff that he's ever done, he had his own record label. He had a gospel record label. And a lot of people don't know that uh, when um, Sunday Best was on, um, most of those artists signed on his label. Mm. Uh, I didn't know that either. Um, he's a uh, part owner on the, uh, the the female WNBA basketball team that just won. He's, he's part owner on that. He got a ring. I mean, he does a lot of stuff. It was really, really, really great. Uh, I learned a lot from him. As he says, he, he learns a lot from me. We have a really good working relationship. We work um, well together. Well, so when I saw the interview, I was just in awe looking at the synergy uh, from from two professionals, two titans in the industry. And I learned a lot really about both of you, but even more about Dr. Knowles, about like he's just he's really a cool guy if you break it down and smart at the same time. So that that really brings the human factor of him being the father of uh Beyonce and Salon. So they they had to get that from somewhere, that work ethic. You know, and I was just like, I really learned a lot. And I think that you did a, a great job on the interview because it just, it was just so simple, you know? So that's why I wanted to ask that question. Like, what was that feeling like, you know, uh, just being around, you know? Well, he, he does, but if you, if you watch it uh, or listen to it, it's on, also on our podcast, um, him and his, his ex-wife both were business minded. I don't know if you saw that she had a, a, her own beauty salon. And so the part that I really liked a lot about it is that he did not force them into uh, entertainment. He let them be who they are. A lot of times we try to live our lives through our kids and we want them to be who we want them to be. And that's really hardly ever works because that's not you know their dream their vision is yours so that i really admire about him is that he he let them flourish and he supported it one of the things that he said on the interview was that if they had wanted to be doctors by the time they graduated we would have purchased the hospital which is major because ain't that many people could say that but um and, and then he's so transparent about um, having uh, breast cancer as a male. 
um, because that's really something that is not really that talked about. And so, yeah, Dr. Knowles is really, really a great guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've uh, you've grown a platform and you've you've shown up uh, for the people in by your giving back and the people who you bring on the platform. So that speaks a lot to you about your integrity and being a woman of God. So what words of encouragement could you give uh, to people to sustain, to keep it going, to feel like going on when they don't uh, feel like going, uh, when they feel like giving up? Keep God first. And everything that you do, um, you know, uh, I don't even understand how people, they believe that they are making it without God. That's, that's, that's just a belief, but I don't understand it because uh, my grandmother, well, my grandfather was a pastor for 70 years and my grandmother, of course, was the first lady, but that was not, not like the first ladies now that got the, you know, their armor bearers and the, and, and you know, somebody follow them around and all that. My grandmother, they, they had a little tiny church in Durham, North Carolina wooden floors, wood burning stove, wasn't nobody catering to nobody. My, they didn't have no armor bearers. They, they were back when prayer was what you knew. You know, you got in there and you prayed and you fasted and, and you put it on the altar and all of that stuff. Uh, and I can't say that there aren't people that are doing it today because I believe that there are, but it's kind of gotten watered down. Everything is, is instant now. I want to be a millionaire tomorrow. I don't want to work for it. I don't want to fast. I don't want to pray. I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice. So yeah, it, to me, it's, it's keep God first, pretty much. Um, it's not that hard. My dissertation that I did when I got my doctorate was um, called the Bible, a Christian's roadmap to life. Everything that you could possibly ever want to know is in the Bible. Every situation that you will go through is in the Bible. But you gotta read it. That is right. I I, I had a conversation with a, a business partner of mine, and so she said her favorite uh her favorite book was the Bible because she said that the the Bible is a book of principles. If we follow these principles, it could show us how to be economical. It could show us how to feed the poor. It could show us pretty much a roadmap of how to it's a how to it's a diy but with the direction and inspiration of god having the father and the creator right and so mm -hmm. with that it's like us as individuals it's easy for us to be so negative uh and we we do have to watch with the company that we keep because sometimes it could be your your very loved ones that speak against you when you're trying to go in a different direction. And so this is a uh, uh, encouragement for the viewers that sometimes you have to literally guard your peace. You got to focus on your peace. And so like there's a saying that you know people say I started to give him or her a piece of my mind. Well no, let's let's just keep our peace so we can have peace. So sometimes you just have to stop conversations. Nope. Mm -mm, I'm guarding my peace. Because I got to be able to get to the next step. And so tell us, how have you been able to, to have a, a, a peace of mind uh, and in your growth? Because you, you've you done some major things uh, in life that, you know, you, it's, it's sustainable, but it's not easy getting to. So how are you able to have that focus and that peace of mind? Realizing when to let people go. Um, I say, love them from a distance. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be cruel. You don't have to cuss them out. But you can put that block on it. Let me tell you what, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a block queen. <laughs> I have a block ministry. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 will block, I will block that call. No, 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 no. You're not getting ready to drain me today because see a lot of people will suck the life right out of you if you allow them to 
you could get up singing, the birds could be chirping and the sun shining and having a beautiful day. And then you get that one call. <laughs> you laughing because you know it's the truth. You get that call and you already know from the first three words, this is not going to go well. <laughs> Yes, I'm I'm laughing because you are the same even when we're on the phone. It's like you just it's you're so personable, but it's like you're coming from a sense of knowledge and it's it's the truth. You know, you already know how the call is gonna go. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I'm, I appreciate I'll be you. like, you know what? Uh let me I got some, you know, somebody on the other line. I don't care what <laughs> I, you know, my dad's calling. Let me, I'll get back with you. And when I hang up, block. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you, t I cannot allow you. You know, if you give someone else that power, they will control you. And hey, Linda, Linda's on. Linda, great. Hey, Miss Linda. Queen, yes, she is. Yes, yeah, shouting out my, my good friend, the queen of... Uh, Nonprofits lenders on, but it you cannot, you just cannot give people the keys to your life. That's what it is. You're giving them the keys to your life, you're letting them control your life. And I learned a long time ago that that just won't work. Um, it causes health issues, bl high blood pressure, diabetes, all of that. So, no, you have to be in control. Um, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. You don't, you don't need to feel guilty about it. Just, I'm, I'm not going to allow you to steal my peace. I love it. That's, that's well said. So it's, it's always amazing that you can take a story and you can refer it to your, uh, your situation, whether it be good or bad. So I can talk about, uh, bad business, uh, partnerships and breakups, but after those bad business partnerships and breakups, I found a silver lining where God is, he had a ram in the bush for me and I was able to partner up with the right people. So it was uh, one situation where um, I had a, uh, a partner of mine who's a mentor in a software company. So that's how I'm able to develop the websites with the digital card and everything. And so we got to talking one day and he said, uh, he said, Derek, I'm going to tell you something. He said, when people build when people burn bridges with you, you don't burn bridges with them because you never know when they might need you. So you need to be in a position to be able to help them in spite of themselves because hurt people hurt people. So they could be hurting from something and they're just acting out uh, for help. And that that really made me pause and I never did think about it. Uh, like that and it was it was an amazing uh, point that you know hurt people hurt people so don't stop stop doing it we got to be able to create a cycle of things where we're helping people because like I tell people when I'm when I'm speaking and talking to them I'm the most selfish person that you ever can meet because I'm going to make sure that I help you first and I'm going to over help you and so that way if I ever need any help I could reach back out and if you can't help me, somebody else can that you know in your network. And if we create an ecosphere like that, then we really can get the ball moving and we can really work together. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. King? Yeah, well, like I said, I'm I'm big on partnership. Um, just want to um, give a couple of shout outs. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Marini, me, Marimi, she's a good, a good uh, follower, great follower on LinkedIn and um Martina's on and Cynthia, um, be sure to share the broadcast because for, I'm, I'm sure that there's people that are out. It's the weather's nice. People are out doing stuff. Um, so they might not see it. So share the broadcast for us, please. We're actually live on Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and five Facebook pages. So um, please go ahead and share the broadcast. So yeah, I, I love, I love partner partnering people partnering with people and helping people i love to help people but you can't help people who don't want to be helped and you have to know when to stop helping stop giving because now you're doing you're wasting time and energy for people who don't want to move 
They don't want your advice. Um, they're combative. Uh, I don't do combative. That's really one of my big pet peeves. If we gotta, if we gotta get on the phone and argue for no, no, this is not a good connection. You can go find someone else that that can relate to what you're doing or whatever. But it won't be me because I don't, I don't like to argue. I don't like to fight. I don't like combativeness. Uh, so I am, I'm a giver. I, I mean. Linda will tell you, anyone that knows me is tell you, I will give, 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 give. But once I see that you are taking advantage of my generosity, my kindness, uh, whatever, I'm out. It's over. Hey, that's well said. You got to, you have to draw a line in the sand with some people because I know you know this. You've uh, you you probably helped someone and they owe you something, and then when you when you go back to them, hey, you remember I did this for you, and they're like, "What? What you talking about, girl? I don't know what you're talking about." And so it's always interesting to see how people they change and they 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 come to you for help, but then when it's time to come back, it's like they act brand new, you know. And so that's that's so funny. It's like when you when you help. And then they're like, no, I don't remember that, you know. So you you got to be able to help yourself first. And so I do agree that you got to be careful with the people that you give to, because sometimes they, you, your giving could also be draining from something that you could be creating. So that's why you have to be careful. So how are you selective of the things uh, that you're working on? Because I know you're very busy, successful woman. So how do you manage all of that and put all of that together? Um, first of all, I want to give a shout out to my team, uh, BWE, BME, the men and women that come on. You see them every day, day in, out, day in and day out. They come on and they minister, they encourage, they uplift, they educate. So I have an amazing team, an amazing board. Um, and I can't start calling names because I'll forget somebody, but they all know who they are. I um, through the grace of God, have built an amazing team. But um, we have gone through a lot of people, and this is not the original group. Uh, you know, it's you have to be able to listen. A lot of us want to talk, 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 but if you listen, you will know if this person is going to be in your corner, gonna going to be receptive, going to be supportive, because uh, one thing I learned is that uh, anybody can 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 make a story look very rosy. It's going to take time and communication to see if that, in fact, is what it is. It will be revealed if you keep listening. Over time, you will see this person said they were going to do this, this, and this, and then you'll see, no, they, they just had a good game but it wasn't real. So the best thing you can do is listen. Communication is so crucial. I love you too, Miss Linda. You know that. That's my that's my girl. Um, but Ms. I, Linda, I love her too. <laughs> and Derek said he love you too. Uh, but but you you really do have to listen because um, people have learned. And look, it just recently okay. I know, and I, I don't really like to do politics, but I'm going to do it. So with the Roe v. Wade, now, if you watched, I'm, I'm not going to really get deep into it, but if you watch the hearings of those judges that said they were not going to change, they were going to stick with the law, it was three of them. That's what they said on camera, and they all voted to overturn it. So, but, but, but the writing was on the wall. It wasn't, it, it wasn't a big surprise to me. I don't know who, 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 who was surprised. Uh, Susan Collins, <laughs> who claimed she was surprised. I don't know why, <laughs> but the bottom line is you, you, you can tell what, where a person's heart is just by mm -hmm. their actions, what they've done in the past. So you have to analyze, listen, communicate. 
Exactly. And so since you said that, that reminds me of another uh, interview where well, you, you've interviewed him uh, uh, a lot of times. Uh, so Dr. Uh, Dr. Reverend Barber. So uh, I think, uh, man, that that guy is just an amazing wealth of knowledge. So how is it uh, working with him and interviewing him? I um, mean, that, that just sparked. Uh, something in me and I just thought about him. So what are your thoughts uh, with, you know, partnering up with him? Reverend Barbara is so amazing. He's one of my all time favorites. And let me tell you, the funny thing about it is I met him four times at four different events and tried to connect with him. And each time it fell through. I mean, I, to the point where he was a keynote speaker, I followed him out the door when he left to grab him to say, look, I need to connect with you. And I, four times it didn't work. And that's another thing about not quitting. I tried again and got the right person and got the interview. Um, Reverend Barbara is so smart. He's from North Carolina, which, you know, that's, where I was born. Uh, and he is like one of the most brilliant pastors, uh, social justice pastors. He is like the next Martin Luther King. That's who he is uh, on, on, a, on, a, on a much bigger level. But he speaks the truth. That's what I love about him. He doesn't sugarcoat it. But he still lets you know, he, 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 he'll tell you in the scripture, this is what the Bible says, the God, uh, Jesus helped the poor. He was worried about the hungry, the lame, the sick, the, the underserved. And he puts it into, in, into biblical terms. So it's not like, it's not just like his word, not my opinion. This is what, if you call yourself a Christian, this is where you're supposed to be. And he does it so well, but what I like most about him is that he loves all people. The majority of the people that follow him are, are Caucasians. If you look at, because he goes live on our page every Sunday, and look at it, his audience is mostly white people, but he is for all people. He wants everybody to have the same opportunity, equal opportunity, and that's what I love about him. Um, it was um, a, a lifetime, a lifetime achievement for me to interview him. Uh, amazing man. Well, look, you know, I, I think I'm going to uh, upgrade your uh, your nickname to Queen of Tech to the Queen of Connections because you are connected with some great resources. And so I personally want to tell you, uh, thank you for allowing me to, to have this opportunity to number one, to interview uh, you on your own platform, and then to be able to have a show on this platform. And that's just because of you, you know, being able to have that opportunity. So I want to tell you how much I thank you and I appreciate you. And uh, my my last question is it's it's, it's a little bit selfish, uh, so so get ready. Uh, so, what are your thoughts, and how did we connect? <laughs> <laughs> so, what are what are your what are your thoughts on on the show? Uh, we could just say on on the show. Well, Derek, I saw you, and I won't mention where I saw you, but I saw you on another platform. And um, what uh, intrigued me, and I, it's not that easy to impress me, and I'm not saying that I'm all that in a bag of chips, but I don't impress that easily. <laughs> it's just what it is. And when I saw you had the digital business card, that really piqued my interest because if there was plenty of other people I could have connected with. And um, you and I got to talk. You remind me a lot of my own son. Uh, and, and so I really love to see young people who are really doing stuff to make a positive difference in the world. Other than the fact that you are a Christian young man, which is major for me, um, 
you know, you 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 reverence God before anything else, and that's that's good. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there who would love to have homes, would love to purchase real estate, would love to know how to um, buy and sell, would love to know how to invest. And so after our conversation, um, I thought that you would be a good fit for our platform. Uh, I know that we have some, some big things coming up with us too as far as empowering the people to be able to purchase their own home, to invest, um, to save, to do a bunch of things. And and um, now more than ever, it's needed because nobody's coming to save us. The people who, who are waiting on the government, you can forget it because it's not happening. You better have your own plan. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, not just here, me and Dr. Knowles and, and others are coming up with um, networks that are going to help you grow and network and evolve and invest and resources. This is what we do. We're giving back to the communities, to our people, because nobody is coming to save us. We are the hope that we've been looking for. And so I see you as a piece of our puzzle as far as providing hope and opportunities for our listeners. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I really do appreciate that. So that's why I said, you know, I'm, I'm forever indebted uh, to you. I want to um, thank you, number one, for giving me the opportunity uh, to, to be here because this is this is a life of an opportunity, you know. It didn't didn't happen, so you know. I want to let you know that uh, that I'm very grateful for the the platform and you know for you being here and creating the space because people definitely women uh, need to see this. And so there's an example and a phrase uh, that uh, that I always use, and I say, you know, yes, I am a man, and I do believe that. The man is supposed to be the head of the household, but however, God made the man to be birthed through the woman. So if that's not a humbling experience, I don't know what would be. So that's why we should work together. And so that's why I'm forever indebted uh, to the women that raised me. I had sisters. Uh, my mom raised me as a single, uh, single mom. And so that's why I'm always figuring out ways how we can work together because I've seen the struggles um, of what my sisters and my mom had to go through and you just you see it so if I can be that one piece uh, to give that encouragement uh, to women and men boys and girls all around you know then I can lend my voice uh, and being ready for the opportunity um, but uh, as we get ready to close, uh, I I really don't want to go. Uh, this is uh, this is so so amazing and, and a grand opportunity. But I would want to give you the last uh, the last word to see what because um, I've learned so much just in this interview, even more uh, that I didn't know about the platform. Um, what is it that you could give? to us, uh, the people and your listeners, to be consistent um, with themselves? What can they do um, to just be better to e evolve? Consistency. <laughs> Consistency. Uh, anything that is going to grow, you have to be consistent. There's plenty of people on Facebook that have Facebook pages that they ain't looked at in 10 years, for five years, 10 months, five weeks. Nobody's, nobody's going to pay any attention to it. You got to remain relevant. You know that on our platforms, we are posting every single day. We don't miss a day posting something. Even if it's one or two posts, you're going to get something every day. Uh, what worked last week is not working this week. People need a fresh word, fresh encouragement, fresh ideas. 
Um, that is who I am. Uh, like I say, we have something really major coming up where you're going to really be able to interact um, and grow your business and get great expert advice. It's coming. Uh, I am so blessed to be in this partnership that I'm not really ready to release yet, but um, it's coming and uh, spread the word. It, big things are coming out of uh, BWE, but um all I'm saying is be consistent. If you can't, if you can't do it yourself, then you better be ready to hire somebody to do it because you have to stay relevant. That's that's the bottom line. Well, look, thank you so much for joining us. And for people that are listening to the replay, make sure you like, subscribe, and share on all platforms because this uh, this has been such an amazing uh, experience and people need to be here. So if you love somebody and know that they don't know about the platform, you need to be sharing. You need to be telling it from the mountaintops. And so I want to uh, personally thank uh, Ms. Dr. Jacqueline LeKing for joining us uh, for this show, Building Wealth Through Real Estate. And the reason why we created it is for you, the listener, to be uh, not just consumers, but prosumers and then to be creators. Because at the end, it's going to be us who create had that can have that sustainability. So Dr. King, thank you so much uh, again for agreeing to come on and just spreading the wealth. Well, thank you. And uh, I just want to remind our listeners that um, Cynthia, you can go back. It's it's going to be on all of our pages. So the good thing about our, our interviews is they are on demand. So you can go back and start it at the beginning. Uh, and please share. And thank you, Linda. Linda said, uh, Derek, it was a great interview. And and Linda knows I, I don't really let people interview me. So Derek, he, he's kind of special because I really don't. I'm very funny about that. But um I just want to remind you all that you are the answer to someone's prayer. You might not even know it, but um, make yourself available to be a blessing because God blesses us to be a blessing. And also, if you want to sow a seed in this ministry, and this ministry has been blessing you, you can go to blackwomenempower.org and sow a seed. We have Giftify, we have PayPal, we have Cash App, um, we even have text to give. So if um, we've been getting good donations and I thanks to all those who have been donating, we've been able to help a lot of people um, in the different communities with food and clothing and uh, domestic violence, uh, victims, toiletries. So keep the donations coming. Nobody gets paid. We are all non-paid workers. We're doing this as our reasonable service. So if you want to give, go to blackwomenpower.org and make a donation. And as always, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Thank you, Derek, for doing a really good job. I didn't know how it was going to come out. I really didn't because we didn't plan anything. And that's really how I do my interviews too. I don't like to I don't like scripted. Let's just have a conversation. Um, so I thank you for doing an amazing job. And Derek will be back next week as regular time uh, so you can get your tips on um, on real estate. And if you want to invest or you want to flip houses or whatever, he, he's got it all for you. <laughs> Give me your website, Derek. Uh, yes, ma'am. It is day group. 21.com that's Diaz and David A Y G R O U P 21.com and he'll he'll type it in the comments um so you'll have it in case you didn't get it thank you everybody you know I love you and until the next time be blessed <laughs>